A master model workflow that uses layout sketches allows you to define relationships between components in three major ways. Defining spatial relationships between components in an assembly. Defining key interface points for components designed in isolation. And defining part geometry. This is a very robust workflow to define these relationships with a simple sketch. To fully leverage a master layout sketch, it is recommended to keep it as the only element in a part studio. Keeping the master model layout sketch separated makes it easy to identify as the driving data and also opens up workflows to reuse the master and other designs later on. The first type of layout sketch defines spatial relationships between components in an assembly for a central location to map mate connectors and update mate connector points. When designing this kind of layout sketch, consider where the components interface and align with one another once assembled. For example, standard content hole locations can be used for mate connector points. Once the master model layout sketch is complete, insert the master sketch into an assembly and use it to mate the components in place. The second type of layout sketch defines key interface points for components designed in isolation and then assembled for the purpose of linking components. This ensures they fit together properly when assembled and has the potential to increase the document performance, having less features in each part studio to rebuild. Once the master layout sketch is complete, use the derived feature to insert the master sketch into separate part studios. Then use the derived sketch in each part studio to create the part geometry that interfaces with each other. Be sure to use the derived sketch directly, so any updates to the master sketch propagate to the parts. Finalize each component design with other needed details. Then, once you assemble the parts, you can easily see how they fit together perfectly. The third type of layout sketch defines part geometry such as size and shape to fit the assembly design. When designing this kind of layout sketch, consider the limits and extents of each part geometry as they fit together in the assembly. Once the master layout sketch is complete, use the derived feature to insert the master sketch into separate part studios. Similar to the last example, define the part geometry off the derived sketch directly, and add any needed details, then assemble the parts. You can use master sketches to achieve all of these definitions. You are not limited to just one approach. For example, if you use a master sketch to define the part geometry in different part studios, you could also use the master sketch in an assembly to define mate connector locations for those parts. Keeping these sketches simple is best practice so that they define the critical interface points of part geometry. This way, as you may need to make changes to the master sketch, the parts and assemblies update in an expected way. The master model layout sketch leverages the benefits of the derived feature and provides a central location for driving critical dimensions. Use this layout sketch master model workflow to improve performance for large projects and reuse the driving data in other workflows.